Welcome to a tutorial on how to solve a Sanger sequencing reaction. Uh, what you need to do a sequencing reaction are two things. You need the template strand, and I've got that right here, and you need a primer, and there's the primer. It's a good idea to download this worksheet and try it yourself first, and then use this as a way to see if you got the right answer. Uh, I won't spend too much time giving you the theory in advance. Uh, hopefully this is something you could work out on your own. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to download the worksheet and give it a, a shot. So the first thing you need to know about the primer is it's going to bind to a complementary region. And I didn't stick this in exactly the right spot here. We've got C and G and A and T like this. So the end, the three prime end of the primer is where we're going to add the new DNA onto. Uh, so this G and C are matched up. All these T's and A's are matched up. And let me see, there we go, put it in the right position. And now we're going to build each successive nucleotide onto the three prime end. So uh, what you need to make new DNA, of course, is uh, the extending of the primer, and in your reaction vessel you need to add the template, which is this part, the primer that you've given, and then we're going to grow the DNA there, and you'll need the enzyme DNA polymerase, you'll need enzymes and such, and also the deoxyribonucleotides. This is going to be the same in all the reaction vessels for the sequencing reaction. What you also want to do is terminate the sequence and for that you're going to use dideoxynucleoside triphosphates and I'll get into those in a little bit. Now this is what an extension looks like. We just add each new nucleotide and they're going to base pair with their complement on the template and they're going to grow. Now the important part is the dideoxy we're going to add in this case is a cytosine triphosphate and I guess I should have put a picture in this but that would be copyright violation if I'm going to put it online. Uh, look up dideoxy, that's D-I-deoxy, and there's uh, hydroxyl missing from both the 2' prime and the 3' prime carbons of the ribose sugar, and therefore it's going to terminate it. And there's only a trace amount, just a little bit. So you've got a large abundance of all the regular deoxyribonucleosides, and wherever we hit a cytosine, we're going to stop. And that's going to go into this well right here. So we're going to generate a whole bunch of different strand lengths from that piece we made, I'll make them a little smaller here. Notice that some of them are a little bit short. Now some of them are full length, that's fine. But those that are short always end on a cytosine. And these are all mixed together in the test tube. You can't see them with your naked eye. So you'll put them into cytosine here in the well, and that DNA can be run on this gel. There's a positive charge at the bottom, and the DNA will move according to its size. Small pieces move rapidly, large pieces move slowly, and we can sort these by size. Well that fills up one well, how about the other wells? Well, we're going to put in trace amounts of each of these into separate reaction tubes, and we'll load those into each of the gel wells, and then we'll apply the electrical current. So, bzzzed, bzzzed, there we go. And you can see that these separated based on size. Well, the smallest piece we get ends on a cytosine, and that's at the very bottom of the gel. So the primer was over here, it's between these two Gs. The cytosine fits there, and we're going to see us a band in the deoxy, dideoxy cytosine tube. Right beside that we'd have a thymine and there you can see the band just like that. So all of these different sized bands are a result of terminating at a different distance. So you just read this from the bottom and this will tell us what the new DNA is that you sequenced. Well remember if the question's asking for the DNA sequence you want the complement. So the piece of DNA you made reading from 5 to 3 is going to read C T a C G and that means that the template and you can follow along up here from the bottom it would be complementary to a G the T is complementary to an A just like this the A is complementary to a T just like what you see there and then C is complementary to a G and the G is complementary to a C so if you were writing out the template strand you would write it out as uh, G A T G C hopefully that makes some sense um, sometimes we might give you a little extra work to chew on. Uh, for example, write out the longest complete but still terminated sequence that would be ending with dideoxythymine. And if you take a look, uh, there's the piece we would have. The primer would be all the way up to, to there. Oh, looks like I should have put a C on there. Pardon me for the mistake. And it ends on a T. So this is what it would look. Oh, it, that's the problem. It didn't line up. Okay, well, uh, not the best example, I suppose but uh, that's kind of what you would see. There's one piece here, and that's going to be its sequence more or less with a C over there. Okay, not my best video, I guess, but hopefully that gets the points across.